You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 433. It's a very special episode, and so thank you all for spending a few minutes of your day with us. We really appreciate it. We do really appreciate it. We also really appreciate the support from our sponsor, like hmm. videoblocks.com. Have you ever needed some B-roll? Have you ever just gone to a stock footage library and noticed, man, it's eight, sometimes 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks just for a 30 second clip? Well, now you can pay one low annual fee and get access to 115,000 HD clips. That's right, it's only $99 for a special one-time offer for Ask Drone You listeners. If you go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone, you can access all of these clips with unlimited licensing rights. Yes, that's right, copyright free. You can use it over and over again. It's videoblocks.com forward slash drone. Check it out. Definitely. It is a special week, though, here in New Mexico. Why is that, Rob? Well, you know what? We've got something that New Mexicans take great pride in, which would be the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. Balloon Fiesta! It, it, Ray! <laughs> it, it really is a very cool event. And it if is. you've never been out here for it, it is... I mean, we get people here from all over the world. It's a lot of fun because when you're out and about in the city during Balloon Fiesta week, you just meet people from all over the place. I just, at breakfast this morning, I was at the machine getting a drink, tea or whatever, and very friendly people. We're, we're from Kentucky, and we're just chatting, and that happens all the time during Balloon Fiesta. It's really oh, cool. That yeah. is really cool. Did they know David Boggs by chance? I don't think they knew David Boggs. Oh, that's too but bad. But I didn't ask him, so maybe they you do. You should have been like, hey, do you know the guy who had his drone shot out of the sky by a shotgun in your city? <laughs> that's one of our students. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they would know that. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, it's cool. It is cool. Um, if you haven't checked it out, here's some awesome stock footage. I'm actually going to upload some of this stuff to Video Blocks later. So if you ever need some B-roll of Balloon Fiesta, I'm going to upload some so you can get it. So, obviously, with an event like this, Paul, people that f have drones, yes. it's a natural, I'm going to go fly this thing. Well, Can they? It's the most photographed event in the world. Yep. Um, I know you had said that in the previous few takes to this podcast. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Just the facts. Um, uh, but yes, even Canon is here, and they give out uh, 5Ds, 6Ds, 70D Mark IIs. Um, they give them out to people, and uh, you all you have to do is take pictures of whatever you want. You can keep the pictures. You give the camera back at the end of the day. Uh, they get to keep the pictures as well, but it's pretty cool that they just hand out probably a half a million dollars in cameras. That's amazing, actually. It's very it is cool. Tr it is truly amazing. And it's I really mean, smart. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of balloons, so there's definitely many different perspectives you can get. Yeah, absolutely. So taking pictures from the ground, obviously that's okay. What's the natural tendency, Rob? Yeah, the natural tendency is for people that have a drone, and, and we hear too often about people that are not being responsible for their drone. If that happens in this case, it could be very dangerous. And so they're not allowed to do that. And w So what's going on with that? So mm. we're going to give you three reasons why not to fly a balloon fiesta. Mm. Number one, reason number one, it's a federal crime. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good reason. <laughs> you can't fly in a TFR. Uh, we are speaking to David Jones, the head of the uh, FISDO department, which is in charge of, that's the FA, which is in charge of safety, uh, making sure all the balloons get off safe. I mean, there literally are hundreds, if not thousands, of balloons on mm -hmm. that field at one time. And uh, it's incredible what they undertake. But rule, yeah, reason number one to not fly Balloon Fiesta, it is a TFR, temporary flight restriction. And you can get in a lot of trouble for it. Yeah, and, and number two, and, and frankly, some of these reasons, they probably overlap in terms of one versus two and three. So number two, I would assume, would be? Number two, because NASA will take you out of the sky. 
and you'll lose your drone. So I almost would like to see that happen. I know, but me too. I don't want to see that happen, so don't try that. But so, that is pretty amazing. So what do they have going on? So NASA has been beta testing their anti-drone uh, technology. I think it's. I don't know. This is purely speculation, but I think their system is very similar to the drone rifle, where it's just interrupting the signal, takes the signal over, tells the drone what to do, lands the drone by the operator, um, and they figure out who's flying the drone. Right. And I think that's really cool because you're not taking the drone out of the sky. It's not falling on people. Uh, mm -hmm. They're able to see who's flying very the thing. Very important. Um, you know, I think if that there were projectiles aimed at drones while they're flying around a balloon fiesta, it probably wouldn't work out for the balloons so well either. Probably not. Yeah, that's probably not the best idea. So also, you know, a balloon can handle a 12-inch tear in the balloon, but anything bigger than that, and they're going to have very serious problems staying aloft. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's a hazard to balloons. Uh, reason number three to not fly your drone at balloon fiesta, APD, supposedly, has a new UAS division. Interesting. So chances are you're going to get arrested. <laughs> you know, I saw that the APD is out on horses this year, and I don't know how many years they've been doing that, but that's pretty cool. So that I wonder if cool. some of those guys are out on the horses. It, yeah, that would be uh, really that would be really interesting. You know what? You just gave me an idea for a video for the Mavic. Cool. Launching a Mavic off of a horse's butt. <laughs> okay. I'm Coming to a theater near you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and probably the number one reason to not fly a drone is safety. I mean... Well, yeah. I, I mean, mean let, let's... That's the overriding... Let's be real, yeah. yeah. Overarching theme here Correct. is uh, it's not safe. Yeah. And, you know, so many people are just... They're just buying drones and flying them everywhere they can. And, you know, guys like Casey Neistat and whatnot don't uh, help with the cause because you know, they take their drone... Or he takes his drone and flies it in New York City all the time. That's you know, class Bravo Charlie airspace. And, uh, it's definitely restricted. Yeah, definitely not cool. So Paul, we've got a lot of listeners and probably 98% of them are not in Albuquerque. And so the balloon fiesta doesn't necessarily impact them. So what can they take from this? Well, I think the thing to know is that always check TFRs when you are getting ready to fly. It is a part of the new pre-flight inspection. So, uh, if you do your FAA research through 1-800-WX-BRIEF, you'll get that information. Um, airmap.io has TFRs built into it. Um, uh, but also, I always check two of these. I never have just like looked at one and been satisfied, to be honest. Uh, so I look between Sky Vector and Airmap. I normally do cool. Airmap first and then Sky Vector after that, uh, just to get the details because there are things that aren't on Airmap. So would you say that people might be surprised at what kind of events actually have TFRs on them? Absolutely. Um, any professional uh, baseball game, football game, uh, any game that's outdoors with an audience over 30,000 people is an automatic TFR. Which, I mean, think about this. Even like a high school football game in Texas could be an automatic TFR if, because they literally get audiences or they get more than 30,000 fans at some of those games. Which would be interesting to see if they actually registered on the FAA's website because you can yeah. go to tfr.fa.gov uh, and find all of the TFRs. But that's a good point. Um, but, e okay, let me ask you this here, Rob. Let's get technical. Okay. Let's get technical here on Drone Let's Jeopardy. Let's get technical. Let's get technical. <laughs> Technical. There you go. Thank you. I just got to get it started, and he's willing to belt it out. All right. So, so Rob, yeah. if I fly my drone over a high school football game, yeah. am I flying my drone in compliance with CFR or 14 CFR 107? No, of course not. Ah, uh, ding, 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 ding. That's right, Rob. You've won a new car. <laughs> but you could get a COW, right? Potentially, you could potentially get a cow, a koa, whatever you want to call, call it. Call it nowadays. Um, you know, don't have a cow over getting a koa. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, yeah, you could get a cow to fly over people, fly over the games, and get footage. Um, now, if you were flying, it, it's so funny. Now that we have the zoom camera, you never need to fly over people. Yeah. Um, I was flying uh, out of Newport Beach area once and just testing the Z3 out. And I mean, I was probably a few hundred feet from the, the water line itself. Got an awesome aerial of the skyline, which was mm -hmm. a few miles away. Right. So, I mean, you can really get some beautiful stuff now with zoom. And uh, if you were aside from the game, if you had an adequate distance that you could safely land the drone in case of an emergency, uh, you were outside of the game with Zoom and you still wanted to get some footage, you could do it. As long as it was not a TFR, because and that's probably going to spread you out too far. Correct. Right. That's correct. Yeah, okay. I'm talking in the instance of high school football game. Yeah. I want to, and thank you for that or clarification. Or a Lobo game. Lobo game. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> I don't know. Poor UNM. 
My alma mater. We love you, Lobos. My Mine too. alma mater. <laughs> Poor guy. But I'm just saying, it's not an automatic Hey, they sell beer TFR. there now. I'm willing to go back to those <laughs> games. <laughs> well, anyways. <laughs> it's not an automatic TFR, but most... Normally, you can't fly over stadiums. And why? Because you can't fly over people. Yeah. Um, factors that will cause an automatic TFR are stadiums with audiences over 30,000 people. Right. Automatic poof, TFR. Yeah. So. And just be smart. I mean, there are balloon f- festivals, if whatever they're called, um, all over the world. If There might not be a TFR at most of those, but be very, very careful if you're going to be flying around balloons, right? Definitely. Know what you're doing. Definitely know what you're doing. Um, before we go, I want to give a quick shout out to a few people. Um, Mike Lieber, a drone you member. He's been a member for, I think, about six or seven months now. Congratulations. Just got a job working for NBC Sports. That's uh, sweet. That is really cool. That is very cool. Our yeah. members do some cool stuff, like they Doug do. Lafarge out of uh, Boulder, Colorado. He uh, now works for Pfizer. He does all the aerials for Pfizer. So I uh, just want to congratulate a lot of the DroneU members. You know, people say not to say it's an elite community um, because that attitude is not there. It's not an elitist attitude by any yeah. means. But as far as drone pilots go, they're definitely a solid uh, example of, of leadership and phenomenal piloting. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it speaks also to the types of opportunities that are out there. I mean, who would have thought you could get a job flying for Pfizer? Seriously. I mean, so some folks might have a tougher time getting their drone business going or getting their drone career going. Don't give up because there's all these opportunities out there that you probably don't even know about. That's so true. There are so many. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. And if you're not a member of DroneU, you may want to think about becoming one why? Because tomorrow, guess what, Rob? What's up? That new 107 class is on the website. We're going to get get it going for sure this time so, for, for real. Yes. For real, for real. Uh, now, also, we've got some news. We're going to be doing two live classes, one in Texas, one in Colorado in November. So if you're thinking about getting your license to fly commercially and you want to do it in person, you want to have a great time with a cool group of guys, I mean, really, the last time we went out there, we had so much fun. You'll get to meet me, uh, and we're even going to have an extra day of flying, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure to check out DroneUlive.com. That information should be up later this week. I am letting you know. Early bird gets the worm, so I'm letting you guys know. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask DroneU.